Hi everyone. Um, we finished up, apart from the cross product, which we'll talk about in a little bit, <coughs> we finished up our discussion of vector spaces. So now we're going to talk about tensors, which are linear maps from a vector space onto itself. And the tensor product of vectors, which can be used to make tensors. So a second order tensor is a linear function mapping a vector space V to itself. And we'll use the word tensor to mean second order tensor. <clears throat> so we'll denote tensors with uppercase capital letters. Yes, capital and uppercase are synonyms, so there you go. Um, and they'll get two underlines if you're handwriting them, or they'll be bold uppercase letters um, if you're typesetting it. <coughs> it's a linear function mapping a vector space V onto itself. So the tensor S maps V to V. And we can define, since it's linear, the product of a tensor on a vector as just the um, the result of that mapping, so is going to be a vector, and it is defined as S of V. <coughs> That'll be for all V in the vector space. So tensors are linear which is to say that s of alpha u plus beta v is equal to alpha s u plus beta sv <coughs> and it'll be for all real numbers alpha and beta and for all u and v vectors in v the vector space Two tensors are considered equal if they do the same thing to all vectors, so if they're the same function. <coughs> So a tensor S is equal to a tensor T if and only if S A is equal to T 
a for all a in the vector space. We can define this in terms of the inner product, if v is an inner product space, like they did in the textbook, um, in which case it would be s equals t <coughs> if and only if. So this is the implies bet. That implies that both ways, um, which would be if and only if a dot s b is equal to <coughs> a dot t b. For all a and b in our vector space. So note that um, you know if if someone writes a dot s b. Uh, this implies. the vector a <coughs> inner product, the vector that is the result of s, b. <coughs> so there's no such thing as a dot s or s dot a. The dot is, um, you know, denoting the inner product, so it's a scalar product between two vectors. Um, so it's not something that you can evaluate between a second-order tensor and a vector space. We can define addition and scalar multiplication of tensors. So the tensor S plus T <coughs> is going to be defined as the action of it on a vector is equal to the action of the tensor S on a vector plus the action of T on that same vector. And that will be for all S and t <coughs> in lin v v. So this here is the space of linear maps from v to v. So that's the space of second order tensors. That's where they live, is lin v v. <coughs> <coughs> And this is also for all v in the vector space. So that's the addition of two tensors. And then there's scalar multiplication. <coughs> the tensor alpha times s, where s is a second order tensor and alpha is a scalar, is defined as the one that maps v to alpha times whatever s maps v to. And this will be for all alpha that are real numbers. 
and for all <coughs> s in lin v v and for all v in the vector space. So we see that the space of second order tensors, lin v v, the space of linear maps from v to v, is itself a vector space in the sense that we can add them together and we can multiply them by scalars. <coughs> now exercise one in the textbook says we should prove that this resulting thing and this resulting thing is still a tensor, you know, that it is still a linear map from the vector space V to itself. Um, so let's go through that example now. Right, so we've, we've defined addition of tensors in this way and multiplication by a scalar in this way, but it remains to be shown that the thing that you make is actually still a linear map from V to itself. So let's go through example one there that was on page nine in the 2010 version, which I think is still the version that's out. <coughs> or exercise, rather. All right, so first let's look at the addition. <clears throat> so S plus T, that tensor acting on V, or that function we'll say acting on V, is defined to be S acting on V plus T. Acting on V. <coughs> All right, well, we can have that act on alpha U plus beta V and make sure that this tensor that is the sum of the two is, in fact, linear. Well, by definition, by this definition, um, this is equal to S alpha U plus beta V plus T, acting on the same thing. Well, S and T are both tensors. Um, that was a given. So those are going to be linear. So that means that this is equal to alpha S U plus beta S V plus alpha T U plus beta T V. 
Well, what we want to show is that this here is equal to alpha s plus t u plus beta s plus t v. So let's um, let's look at alpha s plus t u plus beta. <coughs> S plus T V. Well, from the definition, that is equal to alpha S U plus alpha T U plus <clears throat> beta S V. Oopsies. How do I drop the pencil? There we go. Plus beta T V. All right, well, if we look through term by term, got the alpha SU here, alpha SU here, beta SV here, beta SV here, alpha TU, alpha TU. Okay, so the two are in fact equal. Um, this one and this one. So this S plus T tensor that we've defined in terms of S and T <coughs> is linear in that it's a linear map from V to V. <coughs> so we can say that um, S plus T is in lin VV if S and T are to begin with. So that's good. <clears throat> Come. Let's look at the scale or multiplication one now. So the tensor alpha s, or if we are stipulating that this is a tensor, we're going to show it, acts on v like alpha times the action of s on v. So we want to say I like using alpha and beta for my alpha u plus beta v, so we'll switch out alpha with a gamma here. Um, but we want to say, so given gamma s acting on <coughs> alpha u plus beta v, um, is that equal to alpha times gamma s acting on u plus beta times gamma s acting on v. <clears throat> well, let's look first at this uh, left side here. So just by our definition here, this is equal to gamma s acting on alpha u plus beta v. And s is a tensor that was a given. So we can split this part up into what you'd normally want, right? So this is equal to 
gamma alpha s u plus beta s v. And since this is just um, multiplication by a real number, we can distribute it and, you know, it commutes and everything. So that is equal to <clears throat> alpha gamma s u plus beta gamma SV. All right, now let's look at the um, the second side here. Well, it's pretty easy to see based on the definition that um, that this term here gives that because of the way that we defined the scalar multiplication to work. And this one is identically equal to that. So we're good. So that one is also a tensor. <clears throat> so that means um, that second order tensors are themselves a vector space. Vector spaces have a special unique zero element where if you add it to any other vector, it, um, it gives you the original vector. And so we, we just showed that the space of second order tensors is a vector space. So it has a unique zero element. Tensor zero with two underlines, or it'll be a bold zero if you're typing it up. Well, given that 0 plus s is also a tensor, um, it's pretty easy to see that 0 has to be the tensor that maps all vectors to 0. So 0 times vector v, this is tensor 0 times vector v is equal to vector 0 for all vectors v <coughs> in v, right? That's the only way
So in general, nice algebraic structures like vector spaces <coughs> or groups <coughs> often, where you can add <coughs> their elements together, um, they'll have a unique zero element. <coughs> and nice algebraic structures that you can multiply together will have a unique one element. <coughs> so we'll show in a bit that there is a natural way to multiply tensors together. Um, and so because you can multiply them together and tensors are a nice space, like they don't have any holes or anything, <coughs> um, there's a unique one element for second order tensors. And so this is the identity tensor, one tensor um, acting on V is going to just return V for all <coughs> V in our vector space. All right, so the product of tensors is defined by composition. So the tensor <coughs> S times T acting on V is defined as S acting on the result of T acting on V <coughs> for all S and T in lin v v and for all v in the vector space. So um, <clears throat> because it's defined in terms of composition like this, the product of two tensors does not commute, right? S times T like this is not necessarily equal to T times S. Um, some tensors commute, but not all of them do. How do I make that go away? There we go. <clears throat> and there's a few things that are kind of easy to see. Zero times S. is equal to zero for all s in lin v. <coughs> and that is also equal to s times zero. Right, because no matter what you do, this one and this one both <coughs> are going to map all vectors to zero by default. So they have to be the zero tensor. And the whoopsies, identity tensor, one acting on S is equal to S or rather times s times the identity tensor, and that's equal to s for all s, oopsies, in lin v v.
Um, hey, when you're writing the identity tensor, um, <clears throat> the book uses one. Um, we're probably used to seeing I. I don't really care too much which one you choose to use. Um, just try to be consistent about it. So in other words, you know, you could do, if you do that, that'll be okay. Um, just try to specify and, you know, don't mix and match in the, in the middle of things and we'll be good. All right, <clears throat> so now let's talk about the tensor product. <clears throat> Given two vectors in the vector space, which we'll call, we'll, we'll restrict ourselves to inner product spaces right now. This all works for vector spaces that are not inner product spaces if you consider the dual space, but we're always going to have an inner product. So it makes it a little easier to wrap your head around. So the tensor product is going to be a circle with the times through it. In LaTeX, it's slash O times. And that maps two elements of V to lin <coughs> V V. And it works like this. U tensor product V acting on W is defined as V, so the second argument of the tensor product, dot W, so that's a scalar, times U for all U, V, W, in V. <clears throat> so now we have to ask ourselves, is this object that we just created, U tensor V, actually a tensor? Is it a linear map from V to V, where we're talking the vector space V? Um, and so we're going to show that it is a linear map from V to V. Um, so since I kind of habitually use alpha U plus beta V when demonstrating linearity, let's look at whether A tensor B is <coughs> a, um, a tensor, A tensor product B, where A and B are vectors. Let's use that instead of U tensor V. So A tensor product B is what we're going to prove is a tensor acting on alpha U plus beta V. <clears throat> well, by the definition of the tensor product, that is equal to B dot alpha u 
plus beta v. So that whole thing is a scalar times the vector a. <coughs> well, at the very least, a scalar times a vector gives us a vector. So it's returning the right kind of objects. That's always a good start. Um, and we know that the inner product is linear in both arguments. You know, the vector inner product right here. So that is going to be equal to alpha times b dot u plus beta times b dot v, all times a. And since both of these are scalars here, we can, you know, distribute the a. <coughs> so that is equal to alpha b dot u a plus beta b dot v a. And if we go back to our definition of the tensor product and how it acts on vectors, <clears throat> we see that this is equal to alpha times a tensor b u plus beta a tensor b <clears throat> v. So yes, a tensor product B <coughs> is, in fact, a tensor. <clears throat> it turns out if we have a basis for the vector space V, which is of dimension N, um, lin VV, so the space of second order tensors, will be of dimension N squared. And there is given a basis for V, a natural basis for the space of second order tensors. <coughs> So let's say we have a basis of vectors fi for a vector space v, which we'll understand to be an inner product space from here on out. Well, then every vector v in this vector space can be expressed uniquely in components. equals vi fi, like that. <coughs> <coughs> so
So a tensor can be completely described in terms of how it acts on the elements of the basis. <clears throat> in other words, um, you know how it acts on any vector by taking its components relative to the basis and having it transform the basis vectors. So if we wanted to have the action of T on V, is equal to T acting on VI, FI is equal to VI. We can take the scalar right out of that, times T acting on Fi. <clears throat> well, for each i, the outcome of t times Fi can be expressed in its n components relative to the f basis. So we see that the dimension of lin v v is going to be n squared if the dimension of v is n. Well, given the basis of f's for the vector space v, there is a corresponding natural basis for the space of second order tensors on v that can be defined in terms of the f's and the tensor product so that the components of any tensor t expressed relative to this natural basis for lin v v give the components of the vector tv 
relative to the basis of f's in a way that we're going to show. So the components of T expressed relative to this natural basis are going to do a, a nice thing. <coughs> So it's going to give the components of <coughs> the resulting vector from t acting on a vector relative to the original basis, like this. t acting on v, so the tensor t acting on the vector v. Let's pretty that up a little bit here. Is equal to in components, the i jth component of t times the jth component of v times fi, where v is equal to vi fi. <coughs> so the first guess that you might have for what this natural basis is. We'll get you pretty close, um, and we're going to show why the first guess is not going to be what it is, except in a very special case. So what if we just look at the basis fi tensor product fj, with i going from 1 to n and j going from 1 to n. So say that v is equal to the set of f subscript i tensor f subscript j 
i going from 1 to n, j going from 1 <coughs> to n. Well, let's look at that and see if it works. It's easy enough to show that if f is a basis, that, um, that b here is a basis for lin vv, which is to say that all tensors can be expressed as linear combinations of these, and they can be expressed uniquely as a linear combination of these n squared elements. Um, but it's not going to be the one that we want because it's not going to do this with the components. <clears throat> These are not the basis vectors you're looking for. Basis tensors, I suppose. So to see that, let's say we have a tensor T expressed relative to the basis that we just gave you. So tensor T is equal to Tij, it's Ij component times f subscript i tensor product f subscript j, like that. Well, what is the action of t on a vector v? Well, let's write it out. <clears throat> t v is equal to T I K F I tensor product F K. I picked K here because I wanted the J to be on the V terms. <clears throat> v J F J. All right, so we can move the scalar components out to here and then use the definition of the tensor product. So this is equal to T I K V J F K dot F J times fi. So we see that this only works if fk dot fj is equal to delta ij, which is to say this only is the natural basis if we have an orthonormal basis.
So Fi tensor product Fj <clears throat> is the natural basis for lin vv only if we have an orthonormal basis. In general, the natural basis for lin vv depends on the reciprocal basis, which you can calculate using the inner product pretty easily. Right, so that's another basis for v, but it's the one where its elements go with delta ij when they act on the original basis via the dot product. So the one that we're looking for is going to be the set F subscript I, so the regular basis one. Tensor the jth component of the reciprocal basis with I going from 1 to N, J call this, uh, I don't know, A. Maybe we should call it N for being natural, huh? This seems pretty cool. Uh, maybe give it like a... You don't want to see my cursive. There you go. <clears throat> All right, so here's the reciprocal basis. All right, so you remember um, the reciprocal basis is another basis where F I, the reciprocal basis, is defined as um, F I dot F J, like that, subscript one, so original basis. is equal to delta ij. And if we, um, we said that the matrix G is equal to fi dot fj, both of these being original basis, then uh, we were able to calculate F, hey now, so the ith element of the reciprocal basis is equal to G inverse transpose ij times the jth element <clears throat> of the original basis. Um, we had shown that a few lectures back. So now if we look at you know t acting on v, so now the tensor t expressed relative to this basis, and we'll use k instead of j as equal to t I, K, original basis, F, I, tensor, reciprocal basis, F, K, then um, T, acting on V, is equal to T, I, K, original basis, F, I, tensor product, reciprocal basis, Fk, times Vj, original basis, Fj, like that, 
we can move the VJ out there since it is a scalar and evaluate the tensor product by its definition. So this is equal to T I K V J F superscript K, so the reciprocal basis one dot F J times F I, the original basis one. Well now this one here is equal to delta kj always by the definition of the reciprocal basis. And so in that case, this is equal to <coughs> T I K V J delta K J times F I, which is zero, except for when K is equal to J. So we can eliminate the delta K J and either replace K with J or J with K wherever it appears, and we're going to replace the K with the J. So that is equal to T I J V J times the vector F I, which is the way that we wanted this to work in components. So, you know, this, this N that we defined here, is the natural basis for lin vv. And this kind of first guess that we had is only the natural basis if the basis of f's is an orthonormal basis. All right, so relative to the natural basis, The components of any tensor T are given by this formula that uses the inner product and the reciprocal basis. J is equal to the ith element of the reciprocal basis dot T acting on the jth element of the original basis. Um, since we're always going to be dealing with an inner product space here, we're always going to be able to construct an orthonormal basis. And um, since it makes the math easier, we'll pretty much always assume they should explicitly say so. When you're doing manipulations and trying to prove things, you should always work with an orthonormal basis and say explicitly that you are. Um, when I write orthonormal bases, I put a hat over the vectors to specify that it's orthonormal. Girton just uses E. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, if you do the bold lowercase e and put a hat over it, you'll be good by me. So if e hat i, this set, is an orthonormal basis,
then any tensor t can be expressed like this. is equal to T I J E I tensor product E J where it's all subscripts um, and of course it doesn't matter because the reciprocal basis to this one is the original basis <coughs> so you don't need to distinguish between <coughs> the reciprocal or original basis um, and the components of T, T, I, J can be calculated like this. <clears throat> T, I, J is equal to E, I dot the outcome of T acting on EJ. And that should be a hat there. All right, that's going to do it for this lecture. Um, next time we'll talk about the transpose and symmetry, skew symmetry, some other fun stuff. Uh, I see that five of you already submitted your homeworks as of the time that I've recorded this. They mostly look pretty good. There was like a couple little minor things um, notationally, like you can't have a vector multiplying a vector and giving a vector unless you're doing a cross product, which we didn't do any of. Um, but I think I only saw that one place, you know. So there's, you can multiply, as we just shown, a tensor to a vector to give a vector where you can inner product a vector and a vector to give a real number. Um, and then there is the cross product that takes two vectors and gives a vector that's perpendicular to the original two that we'll get to in a little bit. Um, yeah, and then the other thing is just keep track of, you know, if you have a free index somewhere, it's got to appear in all of the terms that you're summing together or putting on either side of an equal side sign. Um, and dummy indices, you know, they can appear twice. It doesn't matter what you pick for them as long as you don't use the same dummy index more than once in the same multiplied together term. Um, all right, I'll catch up with you folks later. Have another lecture out soon. Um, hope you had a good weekend and hope this week's going well. The weather's certainly pretty nice if you're in Pennsylvania. Catch you later.